welcome to another video I hope you're having an amazing day and in this video we'll be painting a watercolor autumn tree so I'm going to quickly tell you what materials I am using just in case you wanted to know I am using my winter and Newton watercolor brushes my filbert brush in a size 2 for the washes and then I later go in with my round brush in a size 3 and 5 my Montmartre watercolor set and then I squeeze a little bit bit of cadmium red from another set. So I was up for the challenge of something different and looser and hoping to slowly ease my way into painting landscapes, but first of all I would need to know how to paint the basic things that often make up a landscape and so I thought of starting with a tree. And since it is that time of the year, at least when I did this painting, it was autumn, which was great for me since I love throwing in as many colours that I can get away with. So with most things you paint, you have to be mindful of where your light source is coming from and this will shape where your lights and darks will be. And so for me, I decided it would be coming in from the top left. This doesn't have to be perfectly precise, but just so that the leaves and the trunk has some consistency and dimension. So now that we know where the light will be hitting our tree, we can start out with our light colors. So I went in with my yellow mid and dabbed where I want the lightest parts of my tree to be. Now, your lights will be at the very top of your tree. Since your tree is not like a ball where there is a smooth gradient from light to dark, we can think of our tree to have clusters of leaves, where the top of each cluster of leaves is light and then slowly gets darker the further down you go. This helps to bring out the form of the tree, where there are leaves coming out of several branches. Also, try not to have all your clusters bunched up together, allow a few of them to have a gap between them as this will leave room for your branches later on. So, with my yellow mid, I am dabbing in clusters and spacing them out from each other. Then, right underneath each other, I am going in with a darker colour, and here I have chosen vermilion and green light. Under each cluster, it will slowly get darker and darker. Now, I did this very quickly so that my page is still wet, allowing the colour to blend. I am doing this in my filbert brush in the size 2. Then I went in underneath my second tone with a sap green, a darker green than my green light. So next I started painting in the tree trunk, fin at the top and then having it stretch out at the base. Then I couldn't help but add a bit of red and then going in with my layers of sap green, gamboge, green light to give the tree more texture and defining the clusters a little more. paints grey to my burnt sienna to make a darker blacker looking brown to add more texture and shadows to my tree trunk. Not too much detail because I wanted this to be a more simplified and looser painting but if you want to go ham with the detail then go right ahead. A good reference will help with this. Um, for my reference photos I went to my local park. I did start off with a reference but quickly did my own thing with it and so it looks nothing like my reference, hence why I didn't add it to this video. Now with the branches you will want to use a thinner brush, I'm using my size 3 round brush, this is where you can add branches peeking through in between your clusters of leaves, joining them together and have the trunk peeking through too. 
Go and just add a bit more detail to your leaves, putting in the darker areas again and also your darker areas and making the branches darker as they are tucked under the leaves. So if you are mixing colours together and you have a cheaper, more affordable watercolour palette like with my Montmartre palette, it will be less pigmented and therefore will take longer to mix colours and have them saturated. So bear this in mind, but this also helps to keep me occupied while the paint is drying and to step back and see where I want to go next with the painting. But it's just a difference that I've noticed when using a different palette, for example, Winter and Newton. But since I am considered a beginner, I feel that my Montmartre is sufficient to helping me learn without feeling guilty about what paints I'm using. Then after a few finishing touches and you're done. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy these types of videos and want to see more then don't forget to like and subscribe. I upload every week. And as always, God bless and I'll see you later.